considered a simple weapon in its appearance, the bow or a wooden stick, which is similar to it, is found in practically all futures. Each one in its own developed form seeks out for perfection in those movements that are related to war. Countless are the cultures that developed principles of combat with a wooden stick. Bo was a long wooden stick used by shepherds in conducting flocks to guide ships or even for support in the case of carrying baskets of groceries by its ends. In this case, it was placed over the shoulders. Although there are two types of bow, nowadays the average height for this weapon is about 1,80 meter. The basic principle of any movement, whether with weapons or without them, martially speaking, exists in proportion to the amount of body energy or ki. For the oriental cultures we find ourselves inserted in an atmosphere of polarities that converge amongst them, with a kinetic and universal energy that commands all things. When we speak of key, it's an implicit and understanding that there is a way to manipulate it or at least we conceive someone who is capable of doing so. To reflect his energy in a specific point of the weapon's grasp, specifically in our case of analysis of the bow, or even to drive it as a tool of the or attack, demands some criterion. When we analyze the base difference when comparing the Japanese form to the European one, Although, in the last, there are differences regarding each country and culture, we will see that some points should be pointed out for the better understanding of this art and the process of daily learning. At first, we will approach in physical analyze. The Japanese forms use the bow in extent as a long weapon that keeps the enemy away. On the other hand, in more usual in the European form, to hold the bow with the two hands by its central part in order to use both ends. This form allows a more direct contact with the enemy. Contrary to this, in Japanese form, as it started with the Kazeno Ryu, the bow is held by one of its ends with both hands, ensuring that its whole extension becomes useful, taking advantage of its length and range. In a general way, the usage of the weapon is based on a point of support which characterize a leverage system. In the European form, mentioned previously, we can characterize two points of support. Certainly that each one of these techniques, Japanese and European form, have their specific advantage and disadvantage. In the European form, analyzing both body and weapon, the key is correlated to two supporting points that we can identify as a specific point related to the center of both also the center of the energy between both hands and the body center of gravity, the hara. This characterizes a frontal form of combat where the two ends can be used alternately dividing the key in a non-uniform and flow absent energy. The hara, in this case, no matter how contracted it finds itself, will divide its strength and the extremities will start to reverse the role of the addressed energy. If the hara is relaxed, Energy will flow towards the shoulder that will sustain through the elbows the technical form of the central energy displacement, which is restrained by the existing space between both hands. And so, in order to use key in this case, the body should compensate the existing space amongst the two hands, establishing a greater force and a direction for the original applied key. The Japanese technique, on the other hand, establishes this energy in just one extremity converting the body into the other supporting point. On the other hand, all the energy concentrated in one of the ends offers disadvantage in case of reestablishing position, which is correct through the Mai, distance that enables positioning so that the enemy doesn't enter one's guard. But how could key be functional in this explanation? Once our body tension is established within an alert principle in a combat situation, we should recall that the body will naturally move one center of mass downwards, thus increasing our weight and making us lower. Supposedly, after this first moment, within practical studies, accelerates breathing, causing a large absorption of ki. At this moment, the body becomes quicker and it's encouraged to move. If carrying a weapon, we cannot forget that ki flows by its end with its consequence allow it to store one's body energy. 
The ancient masters taught techniques to exhaustion, so the apprentice could make the bow vibrate in its extremity with the minimum of body movement as possible while directing the weapon towards. Other scholars declare that for the key to arrive to the bow, the whole path through the body should be relaxed, disagreeing with the theory of some schools that force its students to train initially with heavy weapons. So the muscles following the mentioned principle should just contract in the moment of impact. It is told, but still uncertain if whether a legend or a true fact, that warriors were capable of breaking stones using this technique of bow. In an impartial analysis, one noticed that a heavy weapon causes inevitably a hypertrophy, which will demand a larger amount of oxygen and will provide a lot of energy in its path towards the bow.